1964, Ford introduced the Mustang. Originally, it was kind of intended as a replacement for the Falcon, but it didn't take long before the performance enthusiasts figured they could make a sweet little ride out of this. Of course, after they sold a million Mustangs in the first two years, Pontiac had to have an answer to that challenge, and they introduced the Firebird. Firebird incorporated all those things that were iconic with the muscle car, with the long hood and the short raised deck lid, kind of Coke bottle styling that the, uh, the Camaros and the Firebirds had back then made it an instant success. And this great example is owned by our friend, and you've seen him on some of our videos, Terry Wright. Terry? great car we just you know finally we've heard so much about it in some of our talks that's right great to see it in the, person this is, it actually exists so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it actually looked really nice and true to everything we know about you and the way you build cars this sucker's bone stock but it looks like it just rolled off the factory and that's what i was going for um I, I don't know why, but I've always just leaned towards what was available at the time. Um, there's not even any day two things on there, you know, Craggers or uh, Hollies and Elbrox, things like that. No, it's the way I could have got it from the factory. This one is my third Firebird. This is my first 68 Firebird. And I mean, I, I, I got, I had a little period where I didn't have any cars. And I had a teenage son that was getting old enough to know, to understand about cars. And I talked my wife into letting me get another car for a project, you know, a father-son project. And I wanted a 68. I had a couple 69s. And I liked, there's something about 68s I liked. Um, so I thought I'd go for a 68. I did uh, send out for the Pontiac Historical Society documentation, so I knew it was an original 400 Firebird. Okay. It was original 400 Firebird 4-speed. I received it, and the first thing I did is I looked at the VIN number on the engine, just because, and sure enough, it was the original block of the, that Num came with the car. So it was numbers, numbers matching. matching. Oh, so I was like, good. oh, I got lucky there. I got yeah. the original motor. So it, it did have... Uh, like a Edelbrock manifold and a Holly carburetor and a and a and a competition her shifter things like that that I immediately put back to stock. I yep. source parts. And those were all correct. common upgrades back then. Oh, very common. The day two stuff, right? Um, but it was so I started sourcing parts and try to uh, start collecting the things that I needed to, to get for it. One year I did the interior, and but I wanted to still drive the car. And I think that's admirable. I got a lot of guys, you know, they get a car they want to restore and they just tear it all apart into pieces and now they can't enjoy the car, it just works. And, and keeping the car running while you're restoring it is a big advantage. It gets your family on board with it because yeah. you can hop the wife and the kids in the car, you can go out and cruise. And you know, sure, maybe it doesn't look perfect yet, but it will. You know, when you, when you look at a lot of performance cars, especially at car shows, you know, what they are isn't necessarily what they began life as. But the great thing about this car is it's got its original, original body, engine, transmission, all the parts are 100% as it came with. That's almost like a needle in a haystack nowadays. Hard to find. If you get a chance, check out Terry Wright's 68 Firebird. It's time well spent.